Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. This is upload number four, and it's also in regards or has elements of Prince Mustafa in it. Today's upload will be the life of Zal Mahmud Pasha. Zal Mahmud Pasha. Many individuals in the Western world will not know who Zal is. Therefore, the talk will be about Zal. I've spoken uh, about Prince Mustafa in the prior uploads, and some people might uh, ask the following question. Why the focus on Prince Mustafa? Okay. okay. Well, this is upload number four. Okay. The prior three uploads will be in in this YouTube channel please look for them I will also input the three past videos in the description part of this upload here so look for them if you find find some time listen to them but it's not necessarily required listening the past three uploads uh, prior to listening to this fourth upload okay this is all by its own also you can just sit and listen to this but it's also it would be beneficial to listen to the other three as well all my uploads this is number four where I talk into the camera are about Prince Mustafa or his life or has elements of his life in these uploads so the question I wanted to answer was why the focus on Prince Mustafa. I talked very briefly about this in upload number one. I'm finishing my my book number three. I've written two prior books. They're not published. I, due to the current situation in my life, I felt uh, it wasn't it wasn't a proper time to have my books published therefore I am writing but not necessarily ready to publish the books but I believe uh, it, it, the time is coming approaching and after I finish book number three and I'm predicting in about two or three months I'll have my I'll have book number three finished and and I will try my best to have it published with a publishing house but I touched on this very briefly there are some negatives going against me to have this book published I've already did some uh, some research on this and um, number one is I don't have the academic background to write a historical book on a character that's from the past Another um, negative against me is is I have a business administration degree. I don't have a degree in history, therefore that's another negative I'm I'm finding. But and there's a couple of other uh, minor elements uh, or negative associated with me writing this book. But uh, uh, let's try to be positive. I will still proceed in trying to have it published. If not, it's not as detrimental it as it used to be 10, 20 years ago, where if a publishing house did not publish your book, it was very difficult to have your book published, yes? Nowadays, there's the internet, right? You can do it on your own. You'll have to, you'll have to do, do some research on this. I've done a bit on this, and there are avenues to, 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 proceed in where you can have your own books published. I can talk about this in another upload, how to publish a book. I, I am familiar with this area. Therefore, if there's any requests in the future, I can I can go into this. I can go into this. But that that's what I'm trying to do is, is just finish the book and then later on in about three or six months down the road, I'll look at publishing my third book. And then after, after uh, number three book, I will go back and um, 
look at number two and number one books and look at publishing those. So therefore the focus, the reason, uh, the focus on Mustafa was, the answer was, the book is about Mustafa, Prince Mustafa, and my, my goal is to upload about 12, 12 videos where I talk into the camera and all 12 uploads will be about Mustafa or the events surrounding Prince Mustafa. Okay, therefore, that, that's the focus. But eventually, I will, I will expand my topic and, and talk about other, other matters. And obviously, other matters being book number two, then book number one, which are also very interesting topics. At least I think so, and I'm hoping the, um, the viewers will find them interesting, interesting as well. Okay, so we, we talked about that briefly, about book publishing. And um, this is the fourth upload where I speak into the camera. And it's about Zal Mahmud Pasha. I made this comment again. I'll make it in the Western world, these important characters from the Ottoman Empire days, it, they're, not, they're not known much, right? There's maybe a, a paragraph here or a paragraph there in, in history books, okay? But there's not a lot of uh, written information in English particularly about these individuals, okay? And that's the main reason why uh, I'm, I, I'm writing the book. And I'm doing these uploads in English. I'd like to have the Western community uh, maybe uh, learn or, or maybe understand these individuals. Just get to know them a bit. So today we're talking about, about Zal Mahmud Pasha. So who, who was Zal? Who was Zal? That's an interesting name, isn't it? Zal Mahmud Pasha was um, was <clears throat> was uh, a pasha in the ottoman empire okay for those who might not know what what the ottoman empire was the ottoman empire was a multicultured empire that came to be in the year 1290ish okay and then, and then it collapsed in the year 19 23 ish okay it it was in existence for about 600 years in the area uh, where current country of turkey is and the surrounding nations so out of the ottoman empire uh, there came about about 40 to 50 countries for those who might not know the capital of the Ottoman Empire was was Constantinople or Istanbul, okay? And I will try to name a few of the countries that came out of the Ottoman Empire, uh, sorry, out of the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. These are some of the countries. Turkey, Bosnia, Albania, Serbia, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Iraq, parts of Iran, um, uh, Armenia, have I hit 10 yet? Yeah, Greece, Macedonia, um, Romania, parts of Hungary, that's just the Balkan area, parts of Ukraine, okay, and let's go to Africa now, uh, Tunis, Morocco, and uh, uh, Libya. So just from memory, I think I named about 20 nations. There, there, there are a few others still that came out of the collapse or the breaking apart of the Ottoman Empire. So that's, that's just a brief, brief generalization of the Ottoman Empire. So let's go back to Zal Mahmud Pasha. Zal Mahmud Pasha <clears throat> was the individual for those who do not know, Prince Mustafa, with the order of his Sultan father, being who? Sultan Suleiman, okay? 
Sultan Suleiman gave the order to execute Prince Mustafa. Why did he do that? We touched on this on a few of the uploads. Please, please listen to them if you want detailed information. But let's just open a paragraph here, uh, and um, and it'll be a very very short one. Prince Mustafa was was charged with treason, was stated to have betrayed his Sultan father, which come forward 500 years because this event, his execution was in 1553, come forward 500 years, we find out that he did not betray his Sultan father. Falsehood there, Mustafa was set up. We know this now because of the studies that were completed by the researchers, the historians, and the academics. What happened was, briefly, some of the individuals around Sultan Suleiman gave the Sultan some documents showing that Prince Mustafa had, had betrayed him. And these documents or letters were false, false, false documents. We find out now. So, so Sultan Suleiman gave the order to execute Prince Mustafa with false information. And, and now Zal Mahmud Pasha comes into the picture. He was the person that killed Prince Mustafa. That was the year 1553. But let's go back a few years and uh, talk about Zal Mahmud Pasha. Zal Mahmud Pasha was born in Bosnia, 1520, okay? And he died in the year 1580 so he lived to be 60 years old in okay. the Ottoman Empire there were children taken from the outside territories or the new conquered areas of the Empire and they were brought in to the soldier system called the Janissary system okay these children or boys were between the ages of say eight years old to about 20. These boys were mostly Christian or Catholic boys. They were brought into the army system and they were trained, given, given good education, given good, good soldier education wow. as well. And then they were allowed to, to uh, go levels higher, okay? And this was one of the that this was one of the or boys that came through the system, this being Zal Mahmud Pasha. So Zal Mahmud Pasha was born in Bosnia, brought into the Janissary soldier system at an early age, okay? He was he converted to Islam, okay, and then he went through the levels of the the, the soldier system and, and then he, he attained the level of Pasha. Pasha is similar to uh, a, a, a sir or a high-level uh, officer in the Ottoman Ottoman soldier system, Ottoman Empire, Empire soldier system. system. He became Sultan Suleiman's one of his one of his elite uh, uh, bodyguards. Mm -hmm. That name Zal Zal was not his his true name. His name was Mahmud Mahmud is is an arabic name to mean uh, praise praising somebody who's who's in high esteem right that's what mahmud means and zal name was given to him afterwards what we find out is zal mahmud pasha uh, uh, let me open up a, a paragraph here about about the book of kings for those who who do not know, in the book titled The Book of Kings, there was a legendary hero. That legendary hero's name was Shah Name. I'll repeat, Shah Name. This was, by the way, a, an Iranian book written in the year 976. In the book, Shah Name was also nicknamed Zal. Okay? Zal uh, is Shahname was 
a very good wrestler. Okay, so the legendary hero of the book was named Zal Shahname, and he was a very good wrestler. So uh, come forward, Mahmud Pasha was also a very good wrestler. He was a very strong wrestler. Therefore, his name was given as uh, Zal also, in addition to Mahmud, and then it, it stayed with him. So his name became Zal Mahmud Pasha. Isn't that interesting, right? Mm -hmm. so, and now it's the year 1553. Mustafa was, was ordered by his Sultan father, Suleiman, to meet him at his tent. Sultan Suleiman was getting ready for a campaign against the Iranian Empire. In that he, he camped in the outskirts of the, t of the city of Konya. Okay. So Sultan Suleiman in the year 1553 was camped just on the outskirts of Konya and he ordered Prince Mustafa to come join him against the campaign against uh, the Iranian Empire. Back then, the Iranians were called the Safavids. Okay. So when Prince Mustafa came to the camp, he entered the, the, the tent of Sultan Suleiman, and guess what happened? Six Janissary soldiers were hiding in the dark corners of the black tent waiting for Prince Mustafa. Once he entered the tent, they jumped him. They wrestled him down, and one of the individuals, number seven, so there were six Janissary soldiers. I can't say the word, I apologize. There were six soldiers plus Zal Mahmud Pasha. Why was he there? Well, because he was one of the guards of Sultan Suleiman. So he was in the tent, and when the six soldiers were having trouble pinning Prince Mustafa down, down to, to strangle him. Okay, we'll talk about uh, the strangle part in a few few seconds here. Zal Mahmud Pasha being the Zal. Remember, Zal meant Zal meant uh, that he was a good wrestler. He jumped on top of Mustafa. He had the white rope, and he was able to put the rope under the chin of Prince Mustafa and squeeze basically killing Prince Mustafa and okay. we were going to talk about strangulations in the Ottoman Empire the preferred way of killing somebody who was one of the members of the family or the Sultanate family one of the one of the members they did not like to spill blood. Um, let me just check to see how many minutes it has been. It's been 24 minutes. And as stated previously, I like to keep these talks between 20 and 30 minutes. I find that is a very good amount of time. So this is this I found this very interesting. Zal Mahmud Pasha had a mosque built. Uh, by by him, he paid it by his own uh, his own yes. funds, and it's located in the district of Ayub, Ayub of Istanbul. For those who have not been to Istanbul or have, I'd like to remind you, Ayub is on the European side yeah, of uh, the big city, north shores of the Golden Horn water inlet in turkish it's called halic okay just on the northern shores uh, of 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 that water inlet and i'm from that area i was born maybe a 20 minute walk from that area i was born in fati which is the next district over these are very old areas of istanbul these are the true areas of istanbul because now Istanbul is a gigantic city. It's just it's just ballooned out. But the true 
Istanbul is those areas. And Zal Mahmud Pasha began the construction of, of the mosque, and the mosque is also called Zal Mahmud Pasha Mosque. So for those that are planning on traveling to Istanbul, you can Google Zal Mahmud Pasha Mosque, and it will show you where it is. Okay. When the mosque was being built, Zal Mahmud Pasha passed away. Okay. The mosque was was completed in the year 1590. So let's let's do some uh, numbers. Mustafa was strangled in the year 1553. The mosque was completed in 1590. Okay. That's 37 years since Mustafa was killed. By who? By Zal Mahmud Pasha with the order of Sultan Suleiman. The people, the people of the Ottoman Empire did not forget about Prince Mustafa. Prince Mustafa was much loved in the empire. He was looked upon as the future ruler, but he was strang strangled and killed. So therefore, he did not become the next sultan. His brother, Sultan Selim, became the next sultan. But the people never forgave Zal Mahmud Pasha. His mosque is still standing to this day in Ayyub, but, but it's not attended it, 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 it's not attended by the common people still to this day the imams that give service or are or are working in this mosque they always complain about the low attendance of the mosque while the neighboring mosques are jam packed with people attending the mosque is that not interesting i find that very interesting the people of istanbul of the ottoman empire Back then, did not like what happened to Prince Mustafa, and to this day, it shows there is still a bit of bias against Zal Mahmud Pasha. He should have never killed the people's favorite uh, prince to succeed Prince Mus uh, to succeed Sultan Suleiman. But that did not happen. He did not succeed Sultan Suleiman. He passed away in the year fifteen fifty three. I think. That should be enough for today. I just wanted to say thank you everyone for for watching and listening. I do appreciate this. Please, please like or dislike. Um, okay. Again, this talk was was just information. It wasn't to insult anybody from the past. And um, please comment. I do appreciate that. If you have time, look at uh, subscribing to this channel and um, click the bell too. Therefore, you will be informed of future uploads. And um, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you.